what is going on guys it is your boy Sessa here bringing guys a video here today bringing you guys a photoshop tutorial on how to create your very own cool smoke assets brushes pretty much the whole like the whole deal like i'm not gonna lie to you. i'm gonna teach you guys the cool things with uh, the brush settings that you can do which just it makes a lot of things that might have felt complicated or or hard to find before stock wise or asset wise just super super duper easy as you guys know the align pack was one of my favorite packs i've worked on personally because i learned so very much during the making of the pack and it's just i'm gonna be showing you guys our, our best our guys i guess across the couple next weeks um just really cool assets and fun things to use in your branded projects and such uh so yeah well yeah of course right let me just show you guys quickly uh quickly some of these like they're all different fun stocks you can just kind of like you know these are like more cloudy smoky really cool stocks you can put on the bottom of the banner wherever you want to do and of course how to create your own little uh brush for it as well so i'm gonna change this color to a different color really quick right just have a little bit of fun with it and it's just one of those things where it's just gonna become it's just gonna become handy to you guys just like how the hell did that happen I'm gonna show you guys right now. So anyway, so likes on the video because I see you down below, which most likely is going to be some kind of cool little brush pack for you guys. Um, just you guys can have it on board. Um, or a little small one from like maybe a little couple things from the align pack, a couple things from my uh, update back from the brush pack. Um, so yeah, so I'm of course just gonna jump into this thing and give you guys at least the first part of the video is pretty much gonna be bas uh, basically making a smoke texture, a smoke brush. Um, because it all everything else kind of just falls after that, like a little just fun little things. Anyway. Hop into the video right now. Let's see you guys in there. All right, guys. Let's just hop right into this thing right now. So, of course, the one thing you're going to need is some pictures of clouds. So, I already have one person I want to use. And right now, I'm going to be basically just taking this uh, kind of section of the cloud right here and kind of cutting that out so that I can use that as my template for a brush and or a cloud, you know, uh, brush set or stock for whatever. Um, however, this doesn't really imply like you have to only use one that looks like this. If you guys go to, of course, I went to Google really quickly and I just typed in cloud. And if you guys already know, I, re <laughs> I remember like very few amount of clouds there are. There's, there's like what? I don't know, like eight. I I don't, I don't remember those. This was like in eighth grade, but there's a lot of different clouds you can use, right? There's a Cirrus, Cirrus, Cyrus. I don't know how to explain sometimes or, or verbalize words or We're just gonna keep going anyway so right for this example right here this is very very cool because if you're looking for more of a cloud texture and or a smoke texture that was very i would say loose or or, or more more so uh airy i would say right as well it's not super like compacted so these right here as well these work very very well but as you can see these picture sizes are not as big as you would need them to be for you to really create a stock out of so what i would make sure you guys do is go to uh, tools size larger than i'm gonna say two megapixels which is pretty pretty good average sort of uh i guess go to but if i look at this one right here this image right here you can see how like really airy that is i would kind of cut out right around here because it kind of feels like very very airy very cool so this is more one of those texture stocks um or smoke stocks that don't just like look very compacted so it really depends on what picture you guys end up choosing but the, all the the premise kind of stays the same so before i also continue there is also something really cool you can do when it comes to the contrast of your uh your brushes so if i really quickly went through a few of these so i have like this one here this one here that all have different contrasts this one here and then like this one here and then this one here as well there's all sort of ones i just took out just to kind of show you guys really quickly the sense of what i mean by the contrast so you can see the one in the middle right here is very very dark very heavy with the dark uh you know values of the color so it'll hold a very easily simple like you know dark color and highlight color if you guys were to use a uh, really cool thing we're going to show you guys in brush settings which i believe is called um color dynamics right so also with this this one on the left hand side is more or less sort towards the the leaning toward the uh more like brightness colors or or more whites rather than more darkers like the how it has in the middle are darker values and the one on the right hand side here is more or so very very super vibrant so it's going to come out a lot more in a sense you're not going to see as much detail in it possibly um over here is more neutral so it really all depends on what the contrast you also have for your brush because obviously it, it makes a difference in the sense of what it's going to look like so aesthetically wise if you guys are looking for more contrast there's a very very strong chance or strong possibility that you guys should also go into your filter camera filter raw make sure by the way your image here is uh, uh not rasterized so in the sense it's a smart object because it kind of counts so you can go back into this uh camera filter raw fe uh, feature very easily so if i were to just zoom in really quickly and right down here you can see a cycle between before and after view so i'm going to click on that so you can see the before on the left hand side and the after on the right hand side so i'm going to firstly do is i'm going to put my clarity up so as you can see i'm going to zoom in very very close to this one cloud i'm going to be cutting out uh, i'm going to just take the clarity put this up a little bit and as you can see all of those values just become very very vivid even you can see them over here on these clouds as well 
like automatically you can start seeing a lot more contrast so I, I like my brushes to have that kind of contrast so it all depends if you want it or not you can take you take your like highlights lower them down so it can be more darker if you put them up it'll be it'll be kind of more or so not showing very too much like you know curves or 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 i guess puffs i would say right um so just put that back to the middle however uh d haze however is one of those really cool ones that i feel like obviously if you have a blue sky we're gonna be taking clouds of course so most of you guys are gonna have images with clouds if you don't whatever but most of you guys are gonna have images with clouds with blue skies so for the next step that's gonna be happening if you guys take your d haze and put this up as well a lot of the values start coming up as well so you see how very very dark this cloud is now getting um this for me is just gonna be more for the example i would say uh, actually, I'm going to lower down just a few just so I can show you guys what I mean for a second But as you can see it, for photography it, it likes to take all the colors surrounding it and make a nice one vivid color So it makes it so it just, it just blends colors together in a, a really cool and odd way for photography images So uh, this is the way I'm going to be using it though for just a quick quick second I'm gonna put my like, like I'm gonna keep my clarity up to 100% to keep that really cool contrast I'm gonna press ok and as you can see I turn it on and off it just like how it just washed out it was washed out kind of before and I took it in and kind of like just put all that contrast in there. But really quickly, let me show you guys an example of what I meant by the dehaze feature. Um, so if I go to uh, channels here, if I go to red, you can see we want to basically cut out this image right here, right? So I'm going to take my eraser in a few seconds and erase that as well. But what I want to show you guys is if you were to, because you can see how all these levels here, these all need to be the surrounding of this one image here needs to be black in order so we can select that mask. Um, so if I go back into layers really quickly and I take my dehaze and put this quite the far up as you can see making these this blue very very dark and very black leveled um i'm gonna go and my channels again go to red and as you can see everything surrounding it is more black which is very very easy now for this to be selected and cut out um the point of this is we're gonna basically take that red channel if you guys go to your channels by the way if you don't have that uh channel table just go to windows and channels i'm gonna take this red drag this down to this uh new layer which is gonna make a duplicate of that red copy and what I'm going to basically end up doing is just sort of erasing or coloring in with a, uh, I'm going to, excuse me, use a brush. Let's use a hard uh, brush here and a black brush here. And just kind of going to go over it and make sure I kind of trace over everything. And so the reason why I just wanted to kind of have it be a little more easier for me to see it or, or why I put my dehaze all the way up besides just putting a lot more contrast on the cloud itself to kind of like show you guys or whatever um it just makes it very easy just to see like where you would want to erase now i, I erase with a sh uh, very hard edge brush if you do end up having like a brush like my own where you can kind of like give it a little more texture or a little more finesse i don't know if it would be the thing you would want to do but that this brush wouldn't work for this instance but for what i just cut out that is pretty good that's pretty fair so what happens is if i go back and click on the rgb channel i can hold control select on the red copy that we made and it'll automatically select that cloud and all those good values and such right there and very simply right so i'm going to click on the layers here and on this layer right here i'm going to go ahead and just uh with the marquee tool here selected it'll give me the option when i select uh right click layer via copy so then if i just get that rid of that <clears throat> it only gives me that cool cutout of that smoke texture now right so cool so we're gonna have to really quickly just make it black and white which is simply just pressing control and u on your keyboard which will bring up the hue and saturation table take your saturation lower down to zero now it's black and white very simple right so now what happens is I'm going to go ahead and I just wanted to, I also have a black background here, so you can't, you can't really see it too well in a white background just so you guys can see it, right? I'm going to go ahead. And since you guys already know the way to save a brush and, or the way to uh, kind of, uh, uh, make it into an actual brush, right? You have to, of course, have your background be transparent because it basically saves everything on that screen at the time. So if I were to get rid of this, you guys can't really see it. Um, it really also does matter in the sense of the values. What Photoshop ends up doing is taking the, the darkness and the light values um, and kind of just takes that and then obviously puts that in a mask in a way that makes it a brush. However, if you can't really see any dark values, it's going to be very awkward. You're going to find your brush to look kind of distorted and or like a uh, weird neutral. But if you guys press Control I on your keyboard, it'll inverse that and make the darkness levels and the lightness levels a lot more easy. And you definitely want to see more darkness um, in the sense of or, or more uh, more contrast, I would say in this brush so that way it, it can really define it and be very easy to define right so once you have this now done you can go to edit and then define brush preset we're just going to call this sure okay so now that i have this brush here as you can see if i just make a white background <clears throat> excuse me black background new layer i can just click and as you can see the the contrast is all there but now here comes the really cool part which i would just like how did I not know this kind of thing? So if you guys go to windows and you guys go to your brush settings, I already have this up here. This icon is where I have to select. Um, you guys can tell, you see this little preview as well. You look at here for most of the 
the little things we'll be talking about for a second. But if I just click and drag, you guys saw in the one brush that I have right here, if I click and drag with this one, it makes it very cool and spacious, which makes it very easy for me to like really house or, or very con like a very controlled, but also still random, which is very, very important for me when I'm working with stocks and such. So if I were to go back to that brush that we just created, right? And if I just click and drag and do that thing, it's gonna be very awkward. I would have to click multiple times. And even so, it would still look kind of uniform, which is kind of awkward for a stock or a texture or an asset that's supposed to be more or less random. So what I ended up doing was, if you guys use these three, shape dynamics, scattering, and uh, which I thought was really cool before I was talking about was color dynamics. Uh, I'll show you guys in a second as well though. But really quick, I'm gonna go by one by one. So I'm just gonna see, right? If you look right here, you can see what it's gonna be doing in a second. So you, as you can see, this is the line we created without any sort of settings on. If you guys go to your size jitter, what this ends up doing, if you put this all the way up to 100%, it'll go basically, if you just see what happens, if I click, 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 it makes it smaller, uh, bigger, medium size. It basically flips through the sizes in the sense of how I, I guess it would retain the most, um, I guess, pixel quality, right? And it'll, it'll give you guys that random feel. So not, you're just not clicking and dragging this one seamless uh, or, or one very patternistic or, or uniform line. You're getting into something more or less or so kind of random. It's getting to that point where it's getting a little bit cool and random. Um, one other cool thing to do as well is put on your angle jitter, uh, jitter, <laughs> your angle jitter, right? Which ends up kind of twisting or turning the, the brush every once in a while as well. So you're now adding values of making it smaller and bigger. And now you're gonna also be adding values of turning the rotation. So I'm gonna take my angle jitter here and I can just see, of course, it starts at zero. So if I go to 100%, that ends up being like a 360. So don't go to 100% again. I would more or less go to, uh, you know, around a 40, 40 ish mark. So if I go ahead now, make a new layer, I'm gonna just quickly erase this really quick because I wanna show you guys side by side as close as possible, right? And I'll just click and drag now. You can see that you're getting more or less some angle jitter. So if you guys look in the bottom left right now, I just pointed out my screen like you can see, but the bottom left of my screen right now is that little small circle. So if I just see me, if you see me click, you can see that small circle is now bottom right. The small circle is now more toward the middle. This is more toward the bottom. So you can see it's also rotating as well. So this is really cool. Very handy for you guys to get that random feature. And we're pretty much almost in that in that part or that development or that, uh, I guess, that statement of having this really cool randomized brush. But there's also one other cool thing you can do is which ends up being scattering. I take this if I was up to 100%. If I just click once, click again, or if I start clicking and dragging, you can see it no longer stays in my region of where I'm clicking it more or less kind of, of course scatters the image or the brush in the sense uh, to a very far away distance. So I'm gonna make it really small so you can see a lot more better. So you can see what's happening there. So that's not what I kind of want, but that also looks like some kind of popcorn. This is gonna be a cool, I guess, feature if you do this on purpose. I mean, to get a really cool texture, who the hell knows? Maybe you guys got some cool little, uh, how do you say, cool little inspiration from it. However, <clears throat> I'm gonna take my scatter and lower it down to like 25 to anywhere between 25 and 50 i believe is most the most value i guess you can get out of this without making it too awkward or, or too too far away from where you're originally clicking at so i'm going to go ahead and make a new layer and you can see now if i click and drag let me make it a little more bigger though all right there we go see it's not scattering too far away from my original click point and that is pretty much the whole these two different things right here are basically the 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 staple into uh making that really cool random brush what ends up being Super, super dope, what I, shall, I just think is super freaking cool because you can do other things as well. And before I get into that really quickly, I'm gonna just show you guys like just one more time, right? How that happens. Now, the color dynamics thing I was talking about basically takes your foreground and your background colors and mix them together. So if I have white and green right now, it should be a white and green brush. So what this ends up doing for me, I had a lot of fun with this because personally in the esports community, most branding companies, you know, work with, you know, reds, oranges, greens or whatnot. So if you guys obviously know the, the team Opti Gaming or whatever, I'm going to guess that if you're watching this video, you most likely know more or less that's toward my community at least, right? If you guys don't, don't worry about it. Basically Opti Gaming uses the color green. So you can make some really cool, like, you know, stocks or, or, or a backing in a sense, right? With just doing something like this, like a fun little smoke texture, have the, the character more or less like in this region right here like hiding behind the smoke or or whatnot my beautiful stuff my beautiful drawing right so it's very very handy in that sense right of course you don't have to only use white i can use green and orange for whatever reason right i'm gonna make another new layer i know i'm making a lot of new layers it doesn't really matter but see how it just you can just get some really cool fun things you can make some really cool awkward abstract you know like you know uh how do you call it clouds right you can just make some really cool fun clouds 
it 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 works just super it just works so cool i don't know for me when i first when i first found this out i was honestly just like shook i was honestly excited because it's super fun and very cool however uh if i just go back into this really quickly brush settings uh take my brush right be sure make sure you guys know if you guys wanted to select this uh these brush settings around and if you don't have any brushes by the way if you guys wanted to know if you guys had the brush mark correct right now our brush is sort of uh, on the top right here there's no icon here as you can see all these icons here means there's a saved brush setting personally to this brush if you guys were to lock these no matter what brush you use it'll end up actually using it so if i want to use this brush with these settings i can then do that without actually having to go back in and changing that's the same exact brush on oops uh, let me use like something like this so you guys can see a different brush but well how is the same settings now right but let's just say if you don't want to sometimes you just want to you just want to have it be used as like a regular old brush like a circle you know i don't want to have my circle brush be like super weird and give me some weird options uh that's why you have to turn them off so turn them off however what i would like to do to make sure you guys understand you save these settings to that certain brush before i actually do that let me go back to that certain brush right this one right here right our original brush so i'm going to go ahead and uncheck them and then i'm going to the top right over here and i'm going to go to click on that and a new brush preset and it's going to call this one press ok so now if i right click you'll see there's one without that little mark here but this is what we have so if i click here you can see these turn off but if i click here again they turn on so it makes it very handy for you guys to have that on deck and make it really cool and i guess that's pretty much the entire premise i mean you could run through a lot of these other settings the transfer setting here if i move my ps4 uh whatchamacallit <laughs> uh controller right if i use transfer it's end up using like sort of like uh opacity settings so if i were to go ahead and turn off this color dynamics for a second as well make this just a pure black note we'll keep it orange whatever if i use my pen right on my tablet let's just go ahead and do this right if i just click soft it'll make the opacity uh obviously a little lighter um if i click a little harder you know it basically has that dramatic i been trying to click harder every single time, right? It, it has a gradient sort of flow when it comes to the opacity itself. So I'm gonna put that back here. But that's what happens if you guys were to use transfer. If you guys wanna like, if you guys were to use it for like texturing, I guess you would say, right? Um, and that's pretty much all all the the cooler ones and or the ones you're gonna be using in the entire time. Um, until then, I think that's pretty much it. But I wanted to show you guys as well with one of my actual brushes that I have, um, like something like this, which I wanted to show you guys. If you guys make cool brushes with like grunges and whatnot, you can make some really cool streaks. Right, like grunge streaks. Usually, if I were to get something like this, I would I would have to type in like grunge streak or 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 grunge line art or whatever or grunge PNG to get these really cool fun streaks. But you can do this very easily because these this as well automatically has these really cool settings for me that I have. Right, that's why it has a little top right brush. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this kind of fun stuff because if you guys are wondering how people are doing them nowadays, this is a very cool fun thing that's just happening around. If you guys are like. Not, I wouldn't say like just like slacking in the sense, but just not knowing. This is one of those things that are really, really awesome just to know. And I think it's just one of those videos that comes with the people who watch it are just going to have a lot more funner time in Photoshop. So with that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today. Don't forget to leave a like, 200 likes on that video. It goes a secret down below, which like I said before, is probably going to be the brush sort of like I'm going to just take some brushes out and kind of like just give them to you guys, right? So much love. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Of course, comment down anything you want to see me do below. Um... And uh, yeah, I, I love you guys. Make sure you guys subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. And I'll tell you guys later. So that's HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Produ Why do I always mess that up? Productive, guys. Later.